So it's June the 5th, 1995. Well, not right now, but it was once. And at approximately 5.55 p.m., a male mallard collided with the glass facade of a wing of the Natural History Museum in Rotterdam in Holland. And unfortunately, it resulted in this duck's death. Within moments of this dead duck hitting the floor, the unfortunate bird was then mounted by another, much more alive duck, who proceeded to have vigorous intercourse with it for a reported 75 minutes before being forced away from the dead mallard. Observing this rather bizarre scene was one Kays Molika, who at the time was an educational assistant at the museum, but today is its director. Naturally, at that point, he grabbed his camera to document the male-on-male -male dead duck loving for science, because YouTube didn't exist yet. Now, the word that probably springs to mind here is why. Well, allow me to explain. Male ducks are incredibly sexually aggressive creatures. This fact, in combination with female ducks tending to be extremely picky about who they're willing to mate with, results in a considerable amount of duck sex ending up being, well, rape. Over time, this has actually resulted in the female duck's reproductive tracts developing random twists and turns with dead ends along the path in an attempt to not actually have the raping duck's sperm fertilize anything at all. In conjunction with this, the male duck's penises have evolved into a relatively long, sometimes spiny, corkscrew-like shape to try to fertilize some eggs anyway. On the extreme end, the Argentine lake duck actually has a penis that is sometimes as long as the entire length of their body at around 16 to 17 inches. So again, the question comes up, why do they need such a long and corkscrewed appendage? Well, researchers at the University of Alaska have stated, our best guess is that the birds use the long penis as a kind of lasso. The males have to chase the females, and even during copulation, the females are trying to escape. In any event, Mulliker himself would later note in an aptly titled paper, the first case of homosexual necrophilia in the mallard, after the breakup of the pairs from mid-March onwards, when the drakes congregate in small flocks, more than a dozen may chase a single female in the air, trying to force her down and rape her. Occasionally, once the female weakens enough to be forced down, this results in the flock of male ducks gang-raping the female duck, sometimes even to death. It is notable here, though, that females, in some sense, they're actually winning the evolutionary battle here. This is simply because the majority of force mating instances that occur don't actually seem to result in fertilization, unlike when the female finds the perfect mate and is actually willing. So going back to the dead duck rape. Well, Mulliker hypothesizes that the two ducks were probably engaged in a similar chase when the male duck that was attempting to flee the rapist duck collided with the window and died. Before 1995, while duck experts had observed male ducks raping dead female ducks before and also have commonly observed male ducks raping living male ducks, never had anyone before seen a male duck having gay sex with a deceased member of its own kind. Thus, Mulliker knew that this event would be of great interest to ornithologists, and so he thoroughly documented the event. On that note, he states the living duck forcibly picked into the back, the base of the bill, and mostly into the back of the head of the dead mallard for about some two minutes minutes then and started to copulate with great force, almost continually picking at the side of the head. He dismounted only twice, stayed near the dead duck, and then picked the neck and the side of the head before mounting it again. For the curious here, the first break lasted three minutes, and the second break lasted less than a minute. Finally, after 75 minutes, Mulika stated, I had seen enough. He then went to disturb the cruel scene and collect the dead duck. Even then, he states, the necrophiliac mallard only reluctantly left his mate. When I had approached him to about five meters, he did not fly away, but simply walked off a few meters, weakly uttering series of two-note rabe rabe calls. I secured the dead duck and left the museum. The mallard was still present at the site, calling rabe rabe and apparently looking for his victim, who by then was in the freezer. As previously stated, Mulika eventually collated his findings in his paper, the first case of homosexual necrophilia in the mallard that understandably caused quite a stir amongst seasoned bird nerds. In addition to being endlessly cited by his peers, the paper saw Mulliker invited to give a TED talk about the event and how it changed his life, and even won him an Ig Nobel Prize, a tongue-in-cheek but nonetheless coveted scientific award handed out to select researchers for scientific achievements that first make people laugh 
and then makes them think. Among other of our favorite researchers who won this award were the team from the University of New Mexico, who for science went to strip clubs and recruited 18 ladies to record their work hours and their earnings. So what was the result of this study? After a sample size of over 5,000 lap dancers in 60 days, it turned out that strippers who had normal menstrual cycles earned almost twice as much per hour in tips when ovulating compared to when menstruating. At other times in their cycle, they earned roughly in between the two figures. Just as interesting, strippers who were taking contraceptive pills did not show any such significant variance in their tips. Now, another Ig Nobel Prize that's particularly interesting went to researchers at Auburn University in Alabama and Wayne State University in Michigan. They discovered that people who regularly listen to country music are significantly more likely to commit suicide. In any event, since 1995, in honor of the dark that so courageously gave its life to let the world know that its kind don't mind having gay sex with their own dead, Mulika holds an informal memorial service on the anniversary of the fateful moment the duck collided with the museum. At each so-called Dead Duck Day, the guest of honor is usually the original dead duck itself, which Mulika had stuffed and put on display in the museum. After displaying the duck to the crowd, Mulika then talks about the event briefly. Next up, he discusses various bizarre instances of animal behavior that took place in the previous year, he reads a message from a prominent scientist related to the event, then finishes up by discussing ideas about how to reduce instances of birds colliding with windows. After all of this, which generally only takes about 15 minutes, the gathered crowd is invited to attend a meal at a nearby Chinese restaurant for a six-course duck dinner. Attendance at this event has been growing in recent years, with 2017 seeing nearly a hundred people show up, meaning a lot more dead ducks are needed to feed those teeming masses. Also included in the 2017 ceremony was the much-anticipated sequel to the Dead Duck event, the second account of homosexual necrophilia in the Mallard, which occurred that year. People have been waiting for this for 22 years. For those who want to pay their respects to the duck at other times of the year in 2013, a small splatter-shaped memorial was also placed at the exact location the duck hit the building's facade. Below this, you can find a small plaque detailing its fate and its later value as a scientific curiosity. Beyond all of this, in 2014, an aptly titled opera, the homosexual necrophiliac duck opera depicting the event, was composed by one Daniel Gillingwater, with Mulaka himself getting to perform the duck call in the premiere at Imperial College in London. So I really hope you enjoyed that day in history. This is a brand new segment here today I found out. We'd love to know what you think of it. You can use the comments for that. You can also use that like button. That lets us know. And if you don't like it, you can use that dislike button. But do remember this is in addition to our regular Today I Found Out content. So tune in today for that as well. You're not missing out on anything. This is just an extra segment that we are trialing. So let us know, like I say, in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching.